A video has started to go viral. It's titled The Murder of Aaron J. Danielson. It has to do with the man in Portland, the Trump supporter who was killed by what, who, a person we believe to be a far leftist. It is important to stress right now there is still a lot we don't understand. While there is a man under investigation, he has not, not been proven guilty. And it's hard to know for sure if the guy that people are claiming is the shooter actually is the shooter. I think there's reason to suggest, yeah, it looks like this guy has got a Black Lives Matter tattoo on his neck. But there's a bunch of threads going viral alongside this video talking about well-trained Antifa hit squads. I believe many of these theories are way over the top, making wild assertions about what people are doing and why they're doing it. And I think that is just, it's, it's, I, I'm not a fan of it. I'll put it that way. Listen, as it, as, as it goes with any theory, pertaining to some kind of high intensity moment when news is just breaking, particularly conspiracy theories. People have a tendency to make a conclude, draw their conclusion and then try and work back to prove that you can't do that. What we need to do is take a look at what happened and then move forward to fit to find out where that leads us. Now, it is fair to say you can have a hypothesis and say, here's what I think so far and move in that direction. I think some of these Twitter threads are a bit too much. So I want to I want to try and actually walk many of these back and make sure people can keep a, 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 a level head about these things. But I have to say in this video, after having watched it, there are many things around the murder of Aaron Danielson that need to be highlighted. And we need police and probably the feds to investigate. I do not think anyone is helping by speculating about death squads and Antifa and tactical teams and whatever this stuff means. But I do believe there are people who may be involved in this potential accomplices at the very least. Strange vehicles waiting as this man gets killed before anything happens. Vehicles pulling up with people jumping out immediately, wearing balaclavas and running up to the body. It's all very strange. And while I'm not, I, I think it's wrong for people to point out that the well-trained international hit squads is ridiculous. It could be something as very simple as they went on the prowl to kill a Trump supporter. They targeted him saying, we got him right here. We got a couple right here. Pull it out here. Yeah. Bang, bang. Seems like they wanted to kill a Trump supporter. And there were many people who were following and watching. And we need to question who these people are. That's the easiest way to put it. There's evidence in this video that something strange is happening. Let me show you this. Let me, let me show you some of this video. Hopefully it plays. They say this was terrorism. It starts by showing just a man walking around live streaming. He stops and takes a look at a, a look over at, at some art moving forward in this video, which I am not a fan of. They make several assertions about what the cameraman is doing and how they believe he's involved. He's a spotter. I, I don't I don't care for any of this. OK, Sometimes people film. Sometimes cars are driving. I don't think it helps anybody to speculate, but but I got to point out where it gets weird. To highlight some art, he mentions in this video, there's a kill box. But I want to show you particularly where things get weird. He says spotter identifies victim by hat. Now stop. In this video, where we're at right now, let me move back a little bit. You see these two cars to the left. They're just stopped in the middle of the road. This is the first question I had. Why? In this video, they try to claim that the SUV on the left is some kind of control vehicle. Sure, I'm sh I bet there are people who want to make, you know, draw conclusions. You can't do that. OK, listen, my point is there's threads with thousands of retweets and we do not want conspiracy theories to muddy the actual investigation of what happened. OK, now there are some valid points here. These two vehicles, you can see the man right here. I'm highlighting him. This is the alleged shooter wearing white. Standing behind him are the two Trump supporters, the two uh, right wing individuals. What is this vehicle on the, on, to the left of them? Just stopped in the middle of the road, not pulled over, not, on, not, not pulled up to the curb, nothing. It's just in the middle of the road, along with an SUV. They're both just sitting in the middle of the road. This is weird. It's very, very weird. I saw that and I ignore all of the theories and I say, why would there be two vehicles that went through the intersection and then stopped and waited next to the Trump supporters? This man then walks up and he yells, we got him right here. We got a couple right here. Now, the friend of the victim has said law enforcement needs to handle this. And that's absolutely correct. I believe they were saying that it, was, it was targeted. 
Now, as we move forward, this is after the instant. So you can't really see anything. Check this out. This is one of the weirdest things to me. Almost immediately, they mention a black charger runs the red light and pulls up behind the target. Where did this charger come from? And why is it that immediately from out of this vehicle emerge individuals wearing balaclavas, wearing ski masks, they get out and they run up to the body or to the victim. I'm sorry, man. This is really weird stuff. Now, I want to break some of this stuff down. Listen, they immediately start saying that they're using a flashlight to, to look for bullet shells and they're cleaning the scene and that their goal is to provide false testimony. Now, hold on, man. Hold on, man. We can't have this, okay? We have video. We're going through it. The police need to investigate. But I will point out another thing. One of the SUV that was sitting in the middle of the road, not moving, they drove in there. They stopped. What were they doing? I don't know. They now pull up to the scene and just sit there. There's explanations for this. OK, it could be that they were honking because they were going to pick somebody up. I mean, typically, if people were doing that, they'd pull up to the curb. So I think it's very, very weird and uh, uh, sure. And they pull up to the side of the road because they witnessed it and maybe want to tell police like I was, you know, chilling and then this happened. And the reason why this black charger may have pulled up with, you know, Antifa looking people inside of it is because there was a massive protest and people were driving around throughout the city. There's explanations for all of this. But I think it's fair to say that at, that at the bare minimum, the speculation we have is that they're, they're, these people were looking for someone. They the guy was armed. He had been arrested and released before. He said, we got him right here. I wonder if they were specifically looking for this individual. I honestly just don't know. But we're seeing a lot of threads about this. Jack Murphy said, open air assassination, coordinated hit teams, trained and practiced killers, premeditated, more is coming. I don't agree. Absolutely not. We are not at the point where we can make any of these assumptions. It, it's, it, th- listen, this is how they get you. This is why I can't stand conspiracy theories. A guy was murdered in Portland. You know it. A Trump supporter had his life ended. We know this happened. And 4chan found who who we believe to be the shooter, a man now under investigation, who his own sister identified. And he's got a Black Lives Matter tattoo on his neck. We don't need to go beyond this. The point of this video and the point of what I'm saying to you right now is that these threads, in my opinion, are damaging and dangerous, and we do not want conspiracy theories. I highlight these vehicles so law enforcement can simply question them. It's a black charger and a black SUV. These people should be brought in for questioning to ask what happened, what were they doing, why were they, why were they there, and to get an accurate assessment of how this all went down. Could it be they were hit teams? Oh, yes, for sure. Fine. But that's not where anybody should have their minds right now. The first thing we do is say, what happened? Who was there? Who are these people? Investigate. And it takes months to do this. Now, you got to move quick. Law enforcement needs to move fast on this because these vehicles are probably long gone. They're going to change their plates. Who knows what if they really are involved in these things? Considering, in my opinion, that's substantially less likely than the fact that in reality, some like think life is boring. OK, my, my, my assumption is why did the charger speed through the red light and then pull it behind them? Because they just saw gunshots and someone run from the scene and they saw a guy collapse in the street. So now you have some Antifa types who watched it happen, pull up, and they're like, whoa, what just happened? A lot of people are speculating as to what what these people were doing. You don't know, man. For all we know, they were cosplayers. Like, I, I know it's absurd to suggest, but I'm just saying you just don't know. So here's the thread. Carlos Azuita has a thread, and he says one last point about the Portland Antifa death squad murder of Aaron J. Dickinson. For all you folks talking about what you do, these killers picked up a target, murdered him and escaped in 14 seconds. Let me tell you what that means. I almost don't want to read this thread because it's just too over the top. Now, I know a lot of people have suggested they've worked in law enforcement and they've worked in these kinds of things. And therefore, what they're saying is true. If, if I, I don't buy it, anybody who's doing a real investigation knows it takes more than several Internet videos and speculation to determine what actually happened. Look, While I think it's strange, there were two vehicles just chilling in the middle of the road doing nothing when all this went down. Sometimes these things happen. And and when you when you speculate, you 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 muddy the waters and you make it harder to actually solve the actual crime. Because I'll tell you this right now, 
Maybe it's true. All right. I'll give it to you. Maybe it's true. What do you think is going to happen when you go to your friend, someone who's not paying attention, and you start telling them about death squads surrounding a guy and, 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 you know, tactical teams jumping out of cars? They're going to be like, dude, you're nuts. What are you talking about? That's crazy. That's, that's crazy, man. They're going to think you're crazy. So what if it's true? And then you go around, you know, frantically telling people that tactical teams are doing this. You discredit the actual investigation. And then what happens is the media comes out and says Trump supporters are pushing wild and insane theories about death squads with multiple vehicles and tactical teams. And it's the most insane thing you've ever heard. And people will say that is insane. Now, is it possible? Like I said, of course it is. But you're sounding you're sounding crazy. I know. That's why I can't stand conspiracy theories. It goes like the, the WikiLeaks emails, all of these things. It's like, listen, you, you do proper investigations. Journalists know how to do this. The few that actually exist. You don't do this. He goes on to say, uh, first, I want to point out something I do not believe to be correct. So we'll, we'll, start, we'll try to debunk some of this. He says, someone yells, move, move, move. Hey, enemy clubs over here. The, the man did not say enemy club. He says, we got them right here or something, to the, something like that. We got a couple right here. He didn't say enemy clubs. This is a problem with people just making threads off of, off of internet videos, but it's got 2,000 retweets. I don't like it when the left does this with Russiagate garbage. And I don't like it when people start watching internet videos and then putting them up saying, aha, this is what happened. And now you get 2,000 retweets and viral videos. I, I, don't, I, I, don't even, I don't even want to, want to read this stuff, but I, I want to kind of debunk this. They were using a patrol formation straight out of intelligence manuals. The death squads were at least five people. Where, where do you, a, a scout, a gunman? Listen, man, I'm just, I'm just going to say no to this. I will point out in areas where I kind of agree, it's weird the vehicles were there. And also they point out the cameraman did not flinch. He just kept filming. That's really weird to me. It is because I've been on the ground and I have seen shootings and the cameraman's behavior the entire time to me is strange, but that's all it is. If you if you start taking all of these assumptions and, and, and drawing conclusions without proper investigation, then you just muddy the waters. I've been in situations where people have been shot. I've been in situations where uh, gunshots have rung out. We've hit the deck. And this whole thing to me is weird. And that warrants an investigation. These threads and these viral threads make it harder. But look, I was in Ferguson when gunshots went out. Here's what happens. You can watch the video. Vice News has it up on YouTube. It still exists. We all immediately drop to the floor. Nobody's shot, but you hear bullets ring out. Every person, except for a few moronic journalists, we all hit the deck. There's like one guy just standing there and another journalist I know yells, come here, come here, get down. In, in all of these circumstances I've been at where shootings have gone off, we hit the deck. In the early days of the Ferguson riots, I was standing on West Florissant and we heard bang, 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 you know, pew, pew, pew. Every person drops to their knees or straight to the ground, save for a few journals have no idea what's going on. At the, uh, uh, coming back to Ferguson, after they announced that there would be no charges for Darren Wilson, we also heard gunshots outside of the police department. Everyone hit the deck. What happened here when this shooting rang out? They yelled, we got him right here, bang, bang. And the cameraman just stands there like nothing doing. Just, oh, wow, what's that? And then he walks over and starts filming. These vehicle, one vehicle speeds off, but the SUV just pull, just, just drives right over to the victim. A charger then pulls out and people jump out. So perhaps what they're saying is true. I can only tell you that the whole circumstance is weird. And these people weren't reacting like anybody I've ever seen to gunshots. And I think that's where this comes from. But it doesn't really prove anything, man. It really, really doesn't. You know, uh, other than that, I, don't, I really don't know what to say about these threads that are going viral. Other than, I, I, I know I said it, but I got to say it again, guys. You push these conspiracies too much and you make it harder to actually figure out who these people are and what they were doing. This is where we need it to wrap. We need law enforcement to find out who these ski mask wearing individuals were. We need law enforcement to find who that shooter was. We need law enforcement to track down that SUV and, 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 and question the driver and question witnesses. The man who filmed this should also be questioned. This is how an investigation works. Some people have said 
The police arrived much too quickly. That's not true. The cops were all around this area because of the ongoing unrest. It's just normal. I've seen this. Man, I don't like conspiracy theories. I think it's weird. And I don't think it's a conspiracy to suggest that a guy who matches the description of a far leftist yelling, we got him, was targeting a Trump supporter. But I think it's weird when you try claiming that tactical groups were doing this. I don't even want to make a video about this, but I kind of had no choice. I'll point out a couple other things just to just talk about what's going on in Portland in general. Listen, you guys got to understand Portland is is chaotic. And, uh, you know, CNN and many of these other outlets are doing their best to just cover up all of this. And I, 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 don't, I, don't, and I don't get it. There's real questions to be asked about what happened with this shooting. The media is going to do everything in their power to make sure no one knows about it. Recently, a C-SPAN caller confronted Brian Stelter saying that CNN is the enemy of the truth. Why? Well, take a look at this. I, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty. I might cover this a bit more later. Brian Stelter wrote an article on July 20th saying right wing media plays up Portland protest violence. He does a whole segment saying that, you know, Portland isn't really that bad. And to this day, he says the same thing. And that's why I think that, that that's why I want to do this video, pulling back on all of these theories, because I'm telling you, man, you're going to get Brian Stelter in two seconds highlighting this and you will never get a real investigation. He's going to claim that right wing lunatics and conspiracy theorists are pushing insane theories about tactical hit squads patrolling the streets. No one will believe it, and they will be primed to ignore anything you have to say. He will poison the well. That's what he's been doing. Right wing media plays up Portland violence, he says, on July 20th. Where are we today, Brian? A man was executed in the street. That we know. That literally happened. What about the, uh, so the, uh, the other story I highlighted, pro Trump supporter, fired paintballs as being sued a month ago. Well, they say last month. It's funny. It was only a couple weeks ago. Over 30 shots fired in Northeast Portland. No injuries reported. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler has to move now because they, they've been attacking his condo and threatening residents. And Brian Seltzer says, nothing to see here, folks. This is the weakness of people outside of mainstream media. They jump the gun and they immediately get discredited while you know you have the mainstream media doing everything in their power to shut you down. Listen, we know the violence is getting worse in Portland. We know Trump has talked about it. We know that Ted Wheeler has done nothing to stop it. Earlier this morning, I mentioned that Oregon State Police were deputized by the feds. This is going to allow them to arrest people, but then those people will be prosecuted by federal government, the federal government because the DA in, in, in Multnomah isn't doing their job. But do not give fuel to the media to discredit and to smear. That's why I highlight this guy with the paintball gun. I'm going to tell you straight up, this guy, he probably, he, he, he did everything in his power to help Antifa and the far left. The, the, as soon as he came out with that paintball gun, and I, I believe he was also seen holding a 22 of some sort. Man, I got to tell you, these, these far leftists were, 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 were saying, thank you. You know, Joe Biden was like, oh, finally, it's exactly what we needed. This guy helped them more than you could possibly imagine. Incoming narrative. Joe Biden's already blaming Trump supporters, and now they've got all the photos they need. And the lawsuit against this man, more evidence of Trump's evil right-wing militias. This is why there's been conservatives saying, stay home, make money, and go vote. You do not want to give the media fuel. And that's all we see when, the, when these counter groups, you know, counter protest groups come out. So what happened? When a bunch of Trump supporters went out and drove around in their vehicles, I'll tell you what happened. Check it out. First of all, there were people with paintball guns. There were some, you know, minor clashes. Somebody got shot and killed. Immediately, that shooting became fuel for Donald Trump. I mean, look, this is, this is the fear that everybody had that Trump supporters were going to be gunned down eventually. Now, how could you possibly ruin what really happened? Let me tell you what really happened. Trump supporter was walking on the street. They shouted, they shouted out they found somebody and someone we believe to be a far leftist killed him. And that immediately makes the whole circumstance nightmarish, and dystopian and scary. And it proves the far left is dangerous and violent. And Donald Trump can come out and say, one of my supporters was killed. How do you disrupt that message and make sure that you take that power away and can carry on with the narrative about the dangerous far right, wild and unsubstantiated conspiracy theories. 
Now you have a story about a man who lost his life. What does it become? It becomes a story about insane QAnon right wingers who believe in creepy tactical cabals trying to kill them. And you immediately take the message away that a man was murdered by the far left. They've been doing this for a long time, arguing that Antifa hasn't killed anybody. Remember, even though, yeah, they've been there, there have been Antifa aligned individuals who have done really horrifying things. They, they repeatedly say the far right is the real threat. And then some guy comes out with a paintball gun and proves them right. Now, I know Antifa is the real threat. I know that they're extremists that, that, you know, you can call far right or whatever. But regular Trump supporters do not fit that bill. You get a far leftist who goes out and kills a guy. And immediately the left is in trouble. Their narrative is breaking down. Brian Stelter just said to ignore what's going on. Nothing's really happening. Uh oh. Brian Stelter and CNN's narrative is crumbling. A man was just executed. <laughs> and then on cue, wild and unsubstantiated conspiracy theories to give the left and the mainstream media all the fuel they need to divert from the Trump supporter killed to the insane wild conspiracy theories. That's why I can't stand it. I'm sorry. I, I know I, I probably repeated myself too much in this, but it's because I'm angry and I'm trying to drive the point home that you cannot be going out with paintball guns and guns to confront these people. The media wants you to do that. It's the weapon they use against you. They are not on your side and they will not treat you fairly. This man who was killed isn't even getting a fair shake. In Kenosha, they're blaming the kid who was running and being attacked. And that's what happens. We had um, Elijah Schaefer on the IRL podcast last night, and he mentioned that what started the confrontation in Kenosha was that Antifa had set a, uh, these, these extremists had set a dumpster on fire and were pushing it towards a gas station. And so they tried to put the fire out and then attacked this kid and he, and he tried to defend himself. The media won't give him a fair shake and they will ban you if you praise him in any way on Facebook and on Twitter. And now you have this. Don't let them take the narrative. I'll leave it there. Next segment's co- segment is coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. It's a different channel and I will see you all then.